This is Nicholas Hall with Point House Aesthetic, and I'm gonna do a quick video for you guys on the Ficus Elastica. Uh, so this is a little guy, and a big part of the misconception on them is that they don't get that big. And in fact, they do, and they do get what are called aerial roots. So you can see there isn't really anything going on on this one because this is a seedling. This is a sapling, effectively. It's not a very big plant. Um, when they get bigger, they can get up to 200 feet almost. Um, one book that I took up here, the Ahmed Fayez Encyclopedia of Tropical Plants says 20 to 30 meters, which I thought was pretty crazy at 20 to 30 meters is about 100 feet. And then I read this one, 60 meters in fact is what it says, or 196 feet. Now I went to a nursery and they said they only get 20, 30 feet tall. And that's true when they're in pots, but when they're in the wild, they get much, much bigger. And like I said, they get aerial roots. So here is an original illustration from 1856 of a ficus elastica um, and how big this is. Those two specks at the bottom, those are people. That is the root system. And the top there is the canopy with aerial roots coming down. So you can imagine how that is a very gigantic plant. It would be astounding to come across. Now here is an illustration from that same periodical, again, 1856 from a Belgian, that created a little illustration lithograph here of a bridge that they made with the aerial roots from the ficus elastica. Now this is like 20 to 30 feet. If you think this is fake, take a look at this. This is a photo of this same type of bridge in Meghalaya, India, which is a state kind of close to Nepal, a little bit more to the east and closer to Bangladesh. Um, and this is what they actually ended up creating multiple aerial roots into bridges, which grows stronger every year. And you can see in this picture, it even is enough to support an actual road practically here. Now, the rubber tree, of course, does get that big over a pretty long period of time. It is considered what's called epiphytic or a strangler fig when it's younger. So it does grow aerial roots and can actually go out, latch onto another tree and supposedly kill it. I've never seen any of them like that before, and I don't see any aerial roots on this one. And I have checked out ones that are 15 feet and still didn't see it. Um, but I have seen online that some people do get aerial roots with their plants, and eventually that would turn into a bigger tree. Now, what are the aerial roots for? Um, this is actually a common trait in the ficus family. Things like the ficus bengalinesis, which is what Buddha was supposed to have achieved enlightenment under, actually can be a quite a big tree. Uh, they are what are also called banyan trees. Um, once that taproot hits the ground, it creates a pillar and it can get a very big tree actually that results. So one such tree, the largest recorded, was 2,000 feet across, and it had th over 320 pillars going into the ground, these aerial root pillars, to feed the tree. And it could put an entire village under it. And you can imagine, or maybe you have trouble imagining, how big that is. Uh, now this tree can turn into quite a tower, like you can see in that illustration, and those bridges, obviously, for roots that big, have to be on a gigantic tree. Um, you'll probably never see those types of aerial roots in a tree like this. And that's because if you're keeping it in a pot, it just can't get big enough to do so. However, um, there are many plants just like it, the ficus family has, that get very big that you'll be able to, you know, kind of appreciate in your own hometown. And, you know, this one in particular, this is uh, a ficus, but it's the Morton uh, Bay fig, my apologies. And it does have edible, supposedly, figs. Now, I've eaten one of these. It was not great. Um, you can see though it looks basically like a fig when you smash it. It might as well be a fig newton. Um, the leaves are quite a bit smaller though. You can see this is not as big. It's a little leathery and you can see different patterns, very fine little lines and stuff. Versus this, although it has the fine lines, it's a much larger leaf, about nine inches by six. And this in comparison you can see is more like maybe five inches long and two to three inches wide. So these uh, in the ficus family get really, really big. This one's only about 40 or 50 feet, but it can actually, in fact, get to about 200 feet tall. I did want to also mention that, you know, this used to be the origin of where we got latex. However, in the early 1900s, they discovered as well that the Havea brasiliensis, uh, which is in the euphorbia family, actually was more effective at uh, latex production because it had a thicker trunk and it produced more sap. Now, in the same family here, euphorbia family, as that Havea brasiliensis, um, is an African milk tree. And if you look, when I snap this off, you'll see this white milky kind of like substance come out. So that right there um, is the same sort of substance that this produces and in fact creates uh, latex. So check out my website if you want to see some of the sources here. Um, I've got photos for everything that I discussed, like the original photo for the, the 1856. Uh, one that we got from, or I, I found on a, a website for a library in Missouri um, who allows us to, to use this without uh, copyright because it's before 1923. 
um, as well as uh, the other one with the bridge, and of course the modern day pictures, which I got off of a, a website as well that allows me to use these that I pay for. Um, so you can see all these. If you have actual first-hand photos, though, I would love to see them. And if you have a big, gigantic uh, you know, rubber tree around you, please take a picture and send it or send a video or something to me. My contact information is on my, on my site under the contact section. Um, I'd love to see that, too. But again, probably never going to see aerial roots on these, or if you do, probably pretty small. But that's going to be on the indoor plants. You know, really not going to see a whole ton of that. But they can, in fact, get quite big, and it's kind of cool to know that you have such a monster that can create such a weird fairy tale, token looking hobbit, you know, wood elf looking thing uh, in the middle of some forest in the tropics. So if you thought that video was cool, like, subscribe, check out the content. Like I said, all my sources are listed at the bottom of the article. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you have a great day.